everyone and uh, today we have a very interesting discussion uh, we've heard so much about third party cookies disappearing from the digital world and uh, the marketer and the brand is moving farther and farther away from the customer and we all know how difficult it is to build that relationship in the digital world and having lost the anchor of using cookies to understand a customer's behavior it's got even worse for for marketers and that brings us to explore the first party data strategy as a solution um having said that we've heard enough about the fact that uh, you know first party data is the way to go uh, when there are no third party cookies for us to uh, bridge upon but uh, first hype today uh, brings this interesting session wherein we want to discuss how do we track and execute in real life practically right how do we track the customers digital footprint in a cookie less world and that that brings me to introduce you to my colleagues here uh, we have vishal sukheja chief product officer and siddhant dave uh the product manager at uh, first hive and let me quickly introduce uh you all to uh, vishal uh, he's been with first hive since its inception and he has over 16 years of experience across product development product management product marketing and so on and so forth uh, also he brings uh, great experience technology experience from companies like tata communications hexa uh, where technologies directly and others and our second host today who will kick start the session in just a few minutes siddhan brings uh, uh, his seven years of experience in managing products across different industries and he specializes in pnl optimization resource allocation and leading the product roadmap so without further delay siddhan over to you and uh, along with vishal we're going to listen to a power packed and insightful webinar on tracking the customers digital footprint in a cookie less world thank you so much nishla for that uh, introduction uh, today i'm going to walk you through different processes which, which will enable you to attain an parallel ROI in your marketing expenditure by the use of first party data over this over the course of this discussion uh, we will cover a framework for your first party data a uh, proof of concept from the real world uh, then cost of inaction in case you miss out on how cap capitalizing on first party data and a workbook on how you can how you can actually get into the space uh, all right let's begin this conversation with an interesting story about two marketers called hensel and gretel both the marketers are trying as hard as they can to get as close to the as close to the customer now the only way they can do it is by picking up the crumbs of data left by the customer all across the internet this could be in terms of uh, third party data it could be in terms of uh, internet cookies and other and other options as well now what has happened due to an ever changing uh, regulatory scenario is that the availability of third party data and the cookies is slowly dying down in this scenario there is no other approach left for hensel and gretel to reach to the as close to customer as they want in that case the customer will not get the personalized service that they're trying to offer and in the end the customer is going to be unsatisfied so in order to get out of this this problem is this situation the solution the savior is first party data and how we leverage it in order to tell us more about how we can leverage the first party data we got vishal sukhaja who will tell us more about how to go forward hey thanks man so uh, first party data obviously i mean with uh, evolving regulation like gdpr ccpa pdpa the upcoming indian idpa all of that kind of puts the focus uh, solely on the brands and uh, with the increasing liability which are associated with the cost of non compliance i think the, the complexity is only increasing for marketers and uh, the data owners uh, on this call today so th from that perspective right when we when we talk to enterprises uh, sorry uh, can you just go to the next slide please yeah. uh, when we when we talk to enterprises uh, why this is obviously typically the first question that we get which is that uh, we understand that we need to uh, invest in uh, first party data as an asset we understand the deprecation of third party data as a source of targeting and how that will impact us and we also understand the liabilities which are associated with non compliance but at the same time how do we really go about it so in this session we'll actually try and give you an actionable framework and this is incidentally the same framework that we use with our customers as well 
something that we've done uh, fairly well and well done over the years, and we're seeing some good success in it. Uh, it's a simple three-step process the way we look at this, which starts off with definition of your data strategy. Now, when we talk about the data strategy, and we we'll obviously delve into each of these uh, phases in much greater detail, this is about understanding and defining what are you trying to do with respect to the first party data as an asset. We then move on to data collection uh, as a vector, where as part of data collection, you will then need to identify what are the data that you would need to collect from which segment of customers, from what sources, and how do you then potentially make it available in a format where it is usable by different uh, cross-functional stakeholders who might need access. The third part of the, of the step of the framework here is the data activation, which is where you put in the entire mechanisms in place for being able to utilize this data. And uh, obviously, uh, it kind of goes without saying that analytics and visibility across the entire funnel is a, is a key throughput uh, measure that you would need to keep measuring as you uh, move ahead here. So as we kind of dwell deeper, right? I think when we talk about data strategy uh, definition itself, to start off, it's a simple matter on a Word document to define or basically answer just three questions. First is what, second is where, third is how. What basically uh, corresponds to what do you need from each customer segment? What is the data that you are looking to capture? What exact attributes? Is behavior important for you? Uh, what behavioral traits, if any? What events? And so on. Bottom line, this is where you are defining the entire universe of data that is potentially available in your ecosystem, starting off with the uh, key sources where your customers end up interacting with you on. And from there, you then move in to try and create a, some sort of a, a filter to say what is actually relevant for you of the entire universe. And this is where the second filter gets applied, which is the where. As part of this where, uh, answer what you're trying to essentially ascertain is across these different segments of customers that you have identified, what data packets that you want to ideally capture, what are the sources, how will you go about capturing those? That is what essentially you're trying to answer as part of the where. And the third part is, and this is perhaps the most critical, is the how, which is how will you put this data to use? The intended use, so it's, it's one thing to say, you know what I have, X uh, petabytes or X terabytes of the customer data as an asset that I'm collecting. But data has a very, very short shelf life. I cannot go to a customer who's interacted with me three months uh, back and say, hey, remember the interaction or the transaction you had done? I need to speak to you about that. Doesn't work. Not relevant, not contextual. So your entire data strategy needs to stem from the end use case of how do you intend to utilize this data. Now, once you have this defined as part of a document, which is obviously needs to be internally aligned, this is where you then start setting up your connectors for your data collection. This is us moving to the second block of the framework where the collection is basically just a fancy way of uh, talking about how are you going to capture all of this data about your customers and how are you going to store it in a format in which it is usable. When we talk about this, there are essentially two things that uh, we need to be cognizant of. One, we are looking at only permission-based opt-in data here, which means that as a brand, you need to be able to instill a sense of trust and you need to ensure that you have a strong data governance policy and framework in place. Whatever is the data that you are capturing across different sources, that is being used towards an intended purpose. And that is again something that gets uh, crystallized in the form of a simple value exchange. The value exchange here uh, is again a fancy way of essentially saying, why should the customer share any data with you as a brand? And that again, uh, when we're talking about that, could be uh, with reference to a sample, it could be part of a specific promotion, or because he's getting a personalized uh, experience on your website, on your app or in store, and so on. The, the key thing here is your entire data exchange as a unit is built on the uh, on the backbone of this value exchange and most of these regulations also clearly put the onus of clarity of data use uh, that completely on the brand so you need to be cognizant uh, of the parameters that you're calling out in terms of why are you collecting a particular information from the customer now the actual process of collection itself once you've identified uh, the first part here 
is for you to then start building out your data collection infrastructure. Now, the data collection infrastructure will again vary depending on the source from which the data is going to be collected from. So, you could bottom line here again is that you need to ensure that you have relevant connectors uh, across your systems of engagement, systems of transaction, and uh, systems of record within your ecosystem. The frequency of the data capture will again need to vary as part of your use case. Whether you need to invest in something that gives you data on a real time trigger. And again, real time is how real time is real time becomes another question that you need to answer. While at the same time, if there are, let's say, cheaper mechanisms, uh, and when I say cheaper in terms of your uh, data workloads around, let's say, ETLs or uh, batch based uh, cross across uh, point of sale systems, data warehouses, transaction data, uh, marketing information, and so on. Now, while you are creating the entire infrastructure to capture not just the first but also your zero party data, which is your customer preference uh, information, you also need to be cognizant of the potential opportunity here to unlock new data sources. So, as a brand, is unstructured data important for you? Uh, when I say unstructured data, this could be in the form of social comments, uh, this could be in the form of uh, raw customer care voice. Or this could be in the form of, let's say, specific merchandising linked images uh, from where uh, you can garner some information which can be leveraged for a specific use case. The cost of capture and the cost of storage on this kind of data is high. So you need to be aware of what that cost represents with respect to your overall data management strategy. Which also brings me to in terms of newer channels. Traditionally, I mean, this is again something that we've seen uh, with large brands globally. Because your social interactions do not come back with a primary which is linked to your CRM data, typically there's no record of that information uh, getting captured in there. Similarly, anonymous interactions on your website, not linked to a customer PII per se, so doesn't get captured anyway. Are those important for you as a brand? Is that something that you need to be looking to invest in? And the third part here is while you've set up the pipeline to essentially bring the data in or push the data out to a node. Uh, depending on your use case here, the value exchange becomes an important component for you to set up to make sure that you have the data that actually starts flowing from this pipeline. The end intent here obviously is to collate the data in a single interface, which in itself is something that can drive significant operational efficiency for you as a brand, but also figure a way to leverage a unified customer identity that in turn can play a role uh, to drive a unified customer experience again. Sure, so that uh, reminds me of a company that we used, uh, that we worked with a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a Southeast Asian type of company, uh, pretty big, pretty big uh, company. Yeah, company yeah. Right now. So this company was employing, had employed several mechanisms in terms of sampling, in terms of uh, presence on social media, having agency tie up with various hospitals to increase the revenue. However, they were not getting the results that were that, that they were hoping for. The, the key problem in that situation was the data that we're generating from different channels was in different silos. So the management, the market here was not able to identify which strategy particularly to go for in order to optimize ROI. That is when they reached out to first type uh, and uh, we created a solution for them that uh, basically collected all the data from across the channels and it integrated and unified the identities of the users, which gave the company an option to personalize the marketing. And to reduce the wastage in terms of uh, marketing expenditure. So, this actually uh, ended up giving the attribute, attributable increase in ROI by at least 30 to 40 percent, as far as I remember. That, that is where the first party data stepped in. So, I, I, I do recall this uh, example that you are uh, referencing. Essentially, uh, I, I do believe here that this uh, organization obviously had a significant amount of social spends on targeting for acquisition of new customers. So, while they had already set up they are uh, first party channels or first party value exchanges in the ocean. Sampling was just one part of it. They were, in fact, running some significantly large offline promotions in hospitals as part of uh, mother and child care, care packages. As well as I, I do believe they also had uh, their own uh, assets in the form of uh, websites that catered right. to the right. same segment, right. uh, which uh, they were leveraging for a silo based targeting uh, piece. I, believe, I do believe that the coalition uh, is something that kind of helped. Then evolve beyond what they were traditionally doing. Right. Right. Absolutely, would agree with you there. Right. And I think that will be a great segue to actually get into the third part of the framework that we were 
uh, referencing, right? Which is to say that you have the strategy in place. You set up the pipelines uh, in terms of how do you want to look at collating the data and making sure it's fit for use. But then what do you essentially do with the data? Now, here again, there are three things I think uh, as marketeers and as uh, data leaders, you need to be cognizant of. The first part is that as part of this entire data evolution, there is a significant onus on the marketeers to be on the right side of the regulation, which means that you need to invest in a consent management platform. And this consent management platform or whatever mechanisms that you have to capture the customer opt-ins across every interface, every channel from where you intend to have an interaction or engagement uh, with them. This consent management uh, platform needs to be integrated with whatever are your targeting mechanisms that you might be uh, utilizing as part of the node systems. At the same time, this targeting needs to be based not only on the siloed channel level identity of the individual, but on the holistic unified customer profile that a platform uh, that a CDP potentially can build for the brand. And here again, while uh, potentially, while I'm kind of obviously uh, referencing CDPs uh, in player, uh, there are uh, data teams uh, who have uh, managed to stitch some amounts of data, obviously what's uh, uh, within uh, their ecosystems via multiple uh, deterministic and probabilistic mechanisms there. The third part here is in terms of the entire activation as well. And this is where you have the node level activations, any uh, specific channels, any... Uh... Trishan, could you go to the next slide, please? Uh, that's basically where you have uh, your entire targeting modules, your customer segmentation and cohort building, your uh, uh, campaign automations, your cross-channel customer journeys. While uh, at the same time, you need to ensure that you are able to personalize and uh, in fact, hyper-personalize this at uh, the consumer scale that uh, brands like you would be uh, dealing with, while at the same time ensuring complete visibility around the entire funnel, including attribution that will yield a forward loop to uh, for driving better campaign optimization. I think Mushal, uh, now would be it would be a, okay. <laughs> I think this would be a right time to shamelessly plug in first time because we've already we're working with so many clients across the industries where we provide them. The data uh, we barely provide them solutions which help them increase their ROI on marketing expenditure by you know unifying the data, collecting the taking the silos from the taking the data from the silos and collecting it and then uh, using our algos to provide the identity identity of the consumers and then helping the marketer reach the goal that they are trying to reach. So I think uh, first part first half as a, as a brilliant leader has already done it with several companies and so what we uh, help. Achieve uh, what our product, what first time helps the, helps the consumer achieve is basically unlock the unique uh, customer identities for them in order to get a better perspective. Track the customer level buyer intent. So basically, not all the or not all customers that visit a digital website, maybe that app, mobile app, maybe website is not coming with an intent to buy a particular item. So we help them monitor that. We deliver a high, highly personalized experience to the customer in terms of what he needs and where he's at. And then basically tweak the campaigns to you know optimize the overall expense and just to overall get a better result in overall campaign management. No, absolutely. Uh, I think again, right, this might be a good point to, to talk about the cost of inaction as well. Something that we had promised earlier on in the uh, in the agenda. Now, while I could obviously offer up quotes uh, that leading organizations or leading uh, individuals, each an expert uh, in their respective fields. Uh, have spoken about the value of data and data being the new oil and so on. At the end of the day, any second or third party data that you potentially license or access. First of all, it's a pay for play. Secondly, it, that data at best acts as a normalizer because that is the same data that is available not only to you, but also to your competition. The only differentiating asset that you have as a brand, the only way you are able to be more relevant, more contextual, in with respect to your targeting, with respect to your personalization, uh, uh, personalized uh, engagement uh, philosophies as well, is the first party data that you will potentially build as an asset. And, and therein lies the true value of uh, what you are trying to do as a brand. So I think that's that's largely what we wanted to cover here. We would love to hear your thoughts and, uh, and get into a one-on-one -on -one discussion uh, if you are interested to speak more and learn more about this. Uh, we are available on marketing at first time. 
and would love to hear from you guys. Thank you. That was amazing, Vishal. Thank you, Siddhant. Um, thanks for uh, your collective thoughts that you've put together. So if I could quickly summarize what any marketer or uh, uh, data analyst can take home is, uh, is a very simple three-step framework. You uh, first create your uh, strategy on a simple piece of paper, a word doc, asking the relevant questions around what sources are you going to target? Uh, uh, what target audience are you going to go after? And use that to actually start collecting data, uh, in the, which is the second step uh, over data collection. And uh, see after collecting the data uh, within um, uh, you know, technologies like a customer data platform, uh, use it to activate it and get to your final consumer and all this is your first party data you don't have to depend on any third party cookies for this like uh, just vishal said any of you you have any questions feel free to drop in your questions to marketing at the rate uh, firsthype.com and also don't forget to download the workbook that's available on this page thank you so much